game development tutorials are sick, and they need a cure. What are they lying to you about? Only the most important aspect of programming. Optimizations! In game development especially, optimizing your systems is one of the highest priorities. The faster your stuff runs, the more stuff you can fit into the game, and yet, nearly every game development tutorial I read leaves optimizations as an exercise for the reader. Even worse, many tutorials teach intentionally bad implementations for the sake of simplicity. This misinformation is extremely detrimental to aspiring game developers, so much so that I've met some people that didn't even know what optimizing meant. How are they supposed to learn what is right if no one is teaching it? For the sake of privacy, I won't be naming any specific tutorials because I don't want any of the authors to feel bad or be targeted by my audience of two people. I understand that this undermines my argument a little, because my source becomes dude just trust me, but like, dude, just trust me. I took notice of this issue in early November when I was researching how best to render grass. In only one place did I read about the billboard grass I described in my first grass video, which was in a textbook from 2007. What I did find was that nearly every tutorial on grass teaches a horribly unoptimal method, a method that if used on a grand scale would leave no room for anything else and would consume all of your game's resources. This method of grass rendering utilizes the geometry shader, so I'll call it geometry shader grass. I've gone through the trouble of implementing it according to a tutorial I found, so let me go over how it works. We should probably start by learning what a geometry shader is. The geometry shader stage exists between the vertex shader and the fragment shader. It governs the processing of the primitives of a mesh. The shader operates on one primitive at a time, rather than one vertex at a time, like the vertex shader, which allows you to do some wacky effects like flat shading, or explosions. Additionally, you can create new geometry in this stage by appending vertices to the triangle output stream defined in the shader code. This functionality is what allows us to create grass in the geometry shader. This mesh generation executes every frame, which means the GPU is creating that new geometry, throwing it away, then creating it again, then throwing it away, then creating it again, but I mean, it's a tutorial that's teaching me how to do this, so clearly it shouldn't be an issue. Lastly, geometry shaders are entirely optional, so if you don't have one in your shader code, then the stage is skipped. With this prior knowledge out of the way, our new grass implementation starts with creating points for our grass to sprout from. Thankfully, I already have code for this written. We can use the same point generation that my previous grass videos use. We have to change our perception a little bit though. Instead of these points being different grass blade objects, these points make up the vertices of a mesh that the grass will then sprout from. With a mesh created for our geometry shader to be applied to, we need to write the logic for creating a grass blade. The tutorial I'm following creates a blade of grass with 12 vertices, which if you recall from my video on grass optimization, is already a bit more than my grass blade 3D model. We loop through the vertices and incrementally increase their height based on the iterator until we have a tall rectangle. Then we append these newly created triangles to the output stream, and... We have grass blades! They look kind of ugly though, so I went through the trouble of improving the appearance with the same color logic as my coloring in modern foliage rendering. All that's left to do is increase the number of blades so that we have a dense field of grass, and... Oh no! It doesn't work! It seems the tutorial fails to mention that the default upper limit of mesh vertices in Unity is 65,000, meaning we can only have 65,000 blades of grass with the knowledge gained from this particular tutorial. That's a bit less than the 8 million blades of grass rendered in my optimized grass video, but in order to truly limit test the geometry shader grass, I'll go ahead and cheat to fix the problem and remove the Unity Vertex limit. This field of grass contains 2 million blades, and we have an average performance of, uh, 110 FPS. 
That's not good. The grass isn't even animated yet. The reason it's so bad is because geometry shaders are notoriously slow. In fact, they are kind of on their way out of the industry and are slowly being deprecated due to how terrible they are. I'm not going to go into specifics as to why, because thankfully there are actually plenty of good articles on why geometry shaders are cringe. All you have to do is Google it. The main reason this is so slow though, is because the triangles for this field of grass are being created by my GPU every single frame, which, if you think about it, it's pretty impressive that my GPU can create millions of triangles at 110 frames per second, but I think the average game developer wants their game to do more than just that. Our grass is looking a little stiff though, so we should get it moving around. Thankfully, I found a great tutorial on Grassway, which I'm sure will work great. This effect is incredibly simple. All we're going to do is generate Perlin noise for every vertex of our grass blade and move it based on the noise value multiplied by the vertical UV coordinates so that the bottom of the grass doesn't move. The result is actually pretty nice. Here's a short clip. What a tranquil vibe, but let's check the performance. Oh, well that's anything but tranquil. The reason this is so slow is because we are calculating noise per vertex. Perlin noise is very computationally expensive. Pretty much every game uses pre-computed noise textures to avoid the performance hit of calculating noise in real time. To put it into perspective, we are calculating 23,520,000 noise values to animate this grass each frame. That's a lot. Hello, Editor Ace Rolla here. This is incorrect. I forgot that since there is no triangle index buffer for the geometry shader, there are no shared vertices. That means each grass blade is composed of 30 vertices, so we are actually calculating 60 million noise values each frame, which is quite a bit more. Sorry for the interruption. At this point, you may be saying to yourself, Ace Rolla, you probably cherry-picked a tutorial off page 3 of Google to prove your point. No, unfortunately not. This grass sway tutorial has almost 600,000 views on YouTube and is the first search result with hundreds of comments about how great the tutorial is. Am I jealous? Yeah, a little bit. So what's to be done about it? If you're a newer game developer or an aspiring game developer, be very wary of the tutorials that you learn from, especially any tutorials that portray the subject as simple or easy, because they are clickbaiting you. Nothing about game development is easy. It's one of the hardest programming specializations by far. The best game development tutorials on the internet for Unity specifically are written by Jasper Flick at catlikecoding.com. Jasper puts tons of context and info into all of their tutorials and makes it very clear what is and isn't optimal. Most tutorials you learn from won't include how to make what they taught you faster. A lot of optimization techniques can be learned by doing traditional, non-game development programming. General algorithmic optimizations will always help you. For game development specific optimizations, I heavily recommend watching GDC talks that are posted to YouTube because they are done by real professionals in the field, but they aren't for a beginner audience generally. Lastly, I recommend checking out textbooks as they are a tried and true learning resource. I don't have many recommendations, but for graphics specifically, the GPU Gems series of textbooks is by far the best resource for learning real world rendering techniques and their applications. If you're a tutorial author, I'm begging you to at least just mention how to possibly optimize whatever you're teaching. If you mention some vocabulary terms, then whoever is learning from you at least has something to Google. I'm well aware that optimizations are almost always contextual and differ from game to game, but there's absolutely no excuse teaching someone to calculate Perlin noise per vertex for a simple animation. You might be saying to yourself, Ace Rolla, why don't you write tutorials yourself? And my answer to that is, 
I don't want to. I only showed off two terrible tutorials in this video, but I assure you the issue is prevalent all over the place, especially YouTube. I'd really appreciate it if you commented your own feelings about predatory tutorial practices, or maybe you disagree with me entirely. I'd also appreciate it if you subscribed. I'm pretty far from my goal of 1000. I've got some cool stuff planned moving forward, but until then, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.